This fact was prepared for the linear and switching circuits unit of the Electronics Combined Framework at Bournemouth University. It's one of three related facts covering the analysis of a simple JFET amplifier circuit. The first part covered the DC analysis of the circuit to find the quiescent operating point, and in particular the bias voltage on the gate and the corresponding DC drain current. In part two, based on the operating point information, we derive the simple linear model of the JFET we can use for hand calculations. And in this final part, we'll use the model to perform an AC analysis of the circuit to find its gain, impedances and output signal level. This is the circuit example we'll be analysing. The JFET parameters are the saturation drain current, IDSS, which is 12 milliamps in this case, and the pinch-off voltage, VP, which is minus 4 volts. This slide shows the results of the DC analysis from part 1. The bias on the gate is minus 2.7 volts, which produces a DC drain current of 1.2 milliamps. The potential gradient formed by the drain current gives a drain voltage of 16 volts and the source at 2.7 volts with 0 volts on the gate. This is the model of the JFET we found in part 2. The key parameter here is the JFET gain, or strictly speaking transconductance, which relates the output signal drain current to the input signal gate voltage, which we found by substituting the DC operating point gate voltage of VGSQ is minus 2.72 volts into the formula. In our circuit analysis, we can replace the transistor by this model, which has firstly a current source connected between the source and drain terminals. This outputs a current of 1.9 milliamps per volt of signal applied between the gate and source terminals. The second component of the model, the resistance RDS, represents the slope of the JFET output characteristic of drain current against drain voltage. However, as this is normally in the tens of kilohms range, it can usually be safely ignored without doing too much damage if we don't know its actual value. We now have all the information we need to perform an AC analysis of the circuit. The first thing to do is to assume that the capacitors are short circuit to high frequency signals. Although you may wish to check this out to be on the safe side, for example, substituting in the capacitor impedance formula, Xc is 1 over 2 times pi times f times c, gives a value of 16 ohms for a 10 microfarad capacitor at 1 kilohertz. That's fairly insignificant in comparison with the kilohm and megohm circuit resistors. Short circuiting the source bypass capacitor shorts out the source resistor too. And finally, the power supply capacitance provides a short circuit path to signals so we can connect the top of the drain resistor down to ground. We are left with this circuit configuration with the drain resistor in parallel with the load resistor. The next thing to do is to swap in the JFET model for the transistor. The gate is connected to the input signal and connecting the drain puts the JFET RDS resistance in parallel with the load and the drain resistors. Here is the overall equivalent circuit to analyse, in this case drawn using multisim simulator components. Tracing the signal through the circuit shows that the input voltage from the signal generator is directly applied to the gate of the JFET. The JFET outputs a drain current proportional to this input voltage, which then passes through the three parallel resistors to produce the output signal voltage VO. Tracing the signal values shows that the JFET gate voltage, VGS, is equal to the 100 mV input signal. The drain current is then calculated as a transconductance, GM, of 1.9 mA per volt multiplied by the gate voltage of 100 mV to give a value of 190 mA. This drain current then passes through the three resistances RDS, RD and RL. If we know the JFET output resistance, RDS, let's say it's 20 kOhm for example, we can include it to give a total load resistance, in this case of 1.25 kOhm, and an output voltage 
of 240 millivolts. This is an overall voltage gain for the stage of 240 millivolts output for 100 millivolts input or a gain of 2.4. Incidentally, this is a small value owing to the less than ideal biasing in this example, although a JFET amplifier gain can be expected to be much less than the equivalent bipolar transistor amplifier gain, part of the price for the high input impedance. However, if we don't know RDS, we could leave it out, in which case the effective load resistance becomes 1.33 kilo ohms, the output voltage is 256 millivolts, and the gain goes up a little bit to 2.56. We can also calculate the circuit impedances. Looking in from the output side, we see the three parallel resistors, RDS, RD and RL. These add up to a total of 1.25 kilo ohms, or 1.33 kilo ohms if we ignore the effect of RDS. Looking in at the input, however, we see only the 1 mega ohm gate resistor. This compares with the much lower input impedance of an equivalent BJT stage. This slide summarizes the results. The input resistance is simply the 1 mega ohm gate resistor. The output resistance is a parallel combination of the JFET drain and load resistors, which is 1.25K. The output voltage arises from the drain current passing through the output resistance, where the drain current ID is given by the transconductance multiplied by the gate voltage provided by the input signal, VI. And the voltage gain, AV, is the ratio of VO to VI, or simply GM multiplied by the output resistance. If you want to simulate the circuit to confirm the results using P-SPICE or Multisimmer shown here, you'll need to enter the appropriate parameters into the generic model of the n-type JFET. Note that SPICE characterizes a JFET, unlike a MOSFET, by its pinch-off and beta values. Also, as the same SPICE model is used for depletion and enhancement mode FETs, the pinch-off voltage is called the threshold value VTO. Beta can be found from the pinch-off voltage and saturation drain current using the formula shown here. MOSFETs have slightly different SPICE models featuring transistor width, length and transconductance parameter KP values because channel width and length are design parameters for an integrated circuit device, whereas JFETs are mostly discrete devices with fixed dimensions, so these constants are all wrapped up in the beta parameter. Note that the simulation results will be more accurate than our hand calculations owing to the more complex nonlinear model used to represent the JFET. However, it's also worth noting that JFETs, like other semiconductor devices, have parameters that vary considerably from their nominal values, so that building an actual circuit may give a different result again, as this simple circuit doesn't use either DC feedback to stabilize the operating point or signal feedback to stabilize the gain of the stage. Here's the check slide. Remember, our objective in this part is to obtain the gain, output, and impedances of the self-bias amplifier circuit. Try it yourself using these values, and hopefully you should obtain the result shown at the bottom of the slide. If you don't want to start from the beginning, you can assume the results of the DC analysis for the circuit operating point. Good luck. Thank you.